So uh, to kind of kick things off, um, this panel is basically around uh, the Open Container Initiative. I don't know how many people are familiar um, with the effort. It's st it was started about roughly a year and a half uh, ago when you know Docker uh, seeded libcontainer, uh, which became Run C and all that good stuff, into the foundation. I kick things off around uh, standardizing, um, you know, certain aspects uh, with like a quick raise of hands. Who's actually heard of OCI? Oh, it's great. It's better than normal, so it makes my life a little bit, a little bit better. But um, you know, we're gonna kind of talk to some of our maintainers in the community and adopters, and kind of get a little understanding of what's going on um, with container standardization. So to kind of kick things off, I'd like to first um, introduce um, you know Rob, Michael, and Alexa, who are here from you know Microsoft, Docker, and and SUSE. Um, to kind of kick things off, Rob, uh, you know, being the uh, kind of quintessential Microsoft uh, person on, on stage here. Can you tell me a little bit about, about your role and kind of what Microsoft is doing in container land? I know there were some keynotes this morning uh, that kind of revealed a lot of cool things, but uh, please feel free to go talk about your background and what, what you're working on in container land these days. Thanks very much, Chris. Uh, my name is Rob Dolan. I work on Microsoft's cross-platform interoperability team, helping Microsoft uh, tools, services, work with uh, other non-Microsoft tools and services. I'm also involved in the Open Container Initiative as a member of our trademark board. I serve as co-chair of our certification work group, and then I also participate in uh, our spec authoring for the runtime spec and the image tool spec. I'm not a maintainer like the two gentlemen <laughs> on my left, but uh, I try to sum submit some pull requests. Uh, Chris, the second part of the question was talk a little bit about in Microsoft. Role in Microsoft, essentially. Sure. Uh, how many folks saw the keynotes this morning? <laughs> cool. So uh, you might you might have seen uh, the opportunity to run Linux containers on a uh, Windows machine, which I don't know about you, but I think that's really exciting. <laughs> I have a Windows machine in my bag, and it's nice that I can uh, run Linux containers on that, and I'm very excited about that. Also, uh, how many of you have heard of Windows containers or Hyper-V containers? Awesome, awesome. So as, as those of you who have heard of that probably know, uh, if you have a uh, workload that requires the Windows operating system and you want to run that kind of using all the uh, tools and technology of containers, you can go ahead and do so on Windows Server 2016. And we also have a build of Windows called Nano Server, which is sort of like a... Uh, shrunken down version of Windows so you don't have stuff like old school fax drivers or things like that on your machine that you're trying to run containers on. Cool. Thank, thank you. Um, Michael, introduce yourself a little bit what you do at Docker and also your role within the OCI. Yeah, so uh, I'm Michael Crosby and I guess I'm an old timer at Docker so I joined like back in 2013 <laughs> and started working on Docker when it was like 0.03. And I guess uh, my main role came around in like the Docker 0 0.7 days is when we developed libcontainer and got that rolled out. And I've been kind of doing that part ever since. And so when that code got donated to the OCI, I kind of went with it. <laughs> so uh, maintainer on OCI's runtime spec and uh, run C as the refer reference implementation of it. Thank you. Alexa, talk a little bit about your, your role at SUSE and, and kind of your involvement within OCI. Yeah, so uh, I'm Alexa. Uh, I'm one of the engineers on the containers team at SUSE, and I mainly work on low-level stuff. Um, so I mean, as, as Michael was saying, with, with libcontainer, I actually I started working on libcontainer back when the, the whole fork happened. And eventually, um, you know, I was working more and more, and eventually I stepped up and became a maintainer of that. And so that's what I've been working on, and I've been working on different specs, and I've also been working on some of the image-related stuff as well, um, writing tools um, for that, which is pretty good. Um, so yeah, I think I've, we've been working a lot with that, and I mean, Susa cares a lot about um, you know open standards and stuff, so that's, that's what I've been working on. Awesome, cool, thanks. Um, so OCI really has two main specification, it has an image spec, you know, essentially it's kind of like the bundle format, and then the runtime spec, the actual execution. Um, what, you know, what's going on in kind of implementation land for these specs, like what are the common implementations um, for folks who don't know in the audience? Um, does anyone want to speak to this, Michael, <laughs> on the container? Yeah, I can talk on Yeah, yeah so like, 
as far as a uh, implementation of the runtime spec, we have run C, which is also part of the OCI. So that will get you kind of zero to the container. Like if you have a spec and you have a root file system, um, anything that you could expect a container runtime to do, run C can do it. And so it will interpret the spec. And we've also kind of a lot of things before they hit the spec, we prototype and run C, not really merge, but um, he's worked on a lot of things with user namespaces, so rootless containers and generally running containers as non-root users on systems. And we've did a lot of work with security in general for run C. And so that's kind of like the first place if you're looking to get involved in like contributing to a container runtime and seeing like what they do, um, run C is probably the best place to start. Yeah, and I mean, in terms of other general implementations of the runtime spec, uh, I know Hyper, um, Hyper, um, Hyper HQ, they have um, run V, which is like run C, but using um, Hyper, uh, their, their virtualization stuff. And there's a bunch of other implementations of, of that spec. Um, on the image side, um, uh, we have an uh, open source has an implementation called Umochi, which is um, I, I, was, I would hope that it would be sort of like run C but for images, in that you can build images and, and, and mutate images and mess around with images, um, you know, from the command line, and then you can create builders from that. Like for example, we have a builder that that uses that. Um, uh, I think in terms of the tooling side, I think I think uh, uh, runtime tools is is much more mature in that sense because I mean image spec is is. It's, it came six months later, but it's it's definitely maturing and it's definitely um, going well. Cool. Yeah. I, do you want to say something or go to the next question? So, um, you know, my kind of next question comes to, uh, you know, standards and specification work generally isn't like the fastest moving thing in the world. Like, you know, it took forever for, you know, like the HP2 work to happen and all that good stuff. Uh, how, uh, how close are we to like 1.0? Final, like what's 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 taking so long? So I think in our industry we're seeing a really interesting and exciting convergence where historically we've had folks that got together and defined things like HTTP or HTML and they drafted what you might call a paper standard. And in the last few years we've really seen the emergence of open source, not just as a way to do collaborative development, but as a way to collaboratively define an interoperability surface so that multiple potentially different implementations can use the same shared code or can make sure that they interoperate with a reference implementation uh, such as Run C that Michael talked about. I think OCI is a really interesting organization in that it's a theoretically a specs first organization but it also has open source code in uh, the runtime reference implementation run C, runtime tools, image tools. Uh, and so you have this interesting merger and dichotomy of the open, the open standard in the image spec and the runtime spec and the open source uh, code reference implementation and the open source tools, as well as a number of industry open source implementations like uh, Container D, like Rocket. And so there's a lot of, uh, I think, kind of figuring out how these two patterns of the traditional bunch of folks get together in a room and work on, you know, I'm the Microsoft guy, so I'll say a Word doc. <laughs> and uh, versus a bunch of folks get together on GitHub and work on code. And so as we've seen these two patterns coming together and as we as an industry are collectively figuring out how to put these patterns together, we've got some really interesting things happening where we've got folks that are, hey, let's, let's make a pull request, let's get this moving, that are used to moving at the speed of open source and folks that are used to three months from now, we're gonna get together in a room and talk about the paper spec and those two cultures are coming together. And I think collectively we're moving faster than the uh, traditional paper standards folks have moved. And we are also probably doing things a little bit more deliberately than folks who come from a more traditional open source background have. And I think the fact that we are very close to a V1.0 
approximately 18 months since we got started on this project is pretty exciting if you consider the timeline that it took for the IETF to get to HTTP or uh, the W3C to get to HTML. And so I think, uh, I think we're doing a good and interesting, a good, fast and interesting job of combining these two cultures in a way that I don't think there's too many other models of open standards and open source really uh, coming together in a single project the way there is at OCI. It's, it's quite the, quite the treatise there. It's good, good, solid. Uh, <laughs> it's, I, I think it's a really exciting and interesting space. And you might notice that from my ongoing talk. So diving a bit into details, Michael, like uh, the runtime spec, what's, you know, what's the, you know, <laughs> status? Yes. <laughs> Not only status, but how, how close are we essentially to, to 1.0? What's, yeah, what, what, so what do you fear is missing? Uh, overall, the runtime spec is really, really solid now. So we're, th we're within a few weeks. We've kind of cut our final RC and are kind of looking for validation and feedback on that from the community and integrators in general. So one of the things that I have on my side to do is get this latest run C integrated into Docker and kind of the history of libcontainer and, and run C. There was an NS in it before it became run C, but libcontainer always had features before Docker. So something would hit the lower level before it could be introduced as like a feature at the higher level. So we've always kind of had this role of like faster move, not really faster moving, but you have to have the foundation built before you can build anything else on top. So going forward, I think we'll still see a lot of that. And as this 1.0 1, 1 spec, there was some new things that came in, especially around like how we handled consoles, like fixing some year long issues with that. And so we have to integrate those back into consumers. But after that, like we're within a few weeks, if we could get some general testing by other users, then we'll be really close to cut the final and move forward. Cool. Awesome. So, um, Rob, you mentioned container D, right? And so I don't know how many people are aware, but container D, uh, is, is now part of the cloud native computing foundation along with, with rocket. So, um, you have two container runtimes in a neutral foundation, which is great. Um, does, you know, does, does that change anything in relation now that, you know, you know, container D, Rocket, or in a neutral foundation, does that mean anything for OCI, or what's what's kind of the relationship that will, will happen now between these kind of two organizations? Who's this for? Let's go for that. Um, I don't think it changes anything. Like, OCI is the central kind of body where we're specifying the I.O. for containers and images, where, like, no matter... How, how you implement it on either side, like this is kind of your consistent thing in the industry. All right, so my next question is, uh, so we're, we're getting close to 1.0, we're, we're, we're getting there. Um, eventually, uh, you, know, you know, does that mean we're done? Like, you know, is essentially like work's done, we could kind of move on. Uh, or, you know, do we have plans potentially for the future? Uh, you know, what, what will potentially, what's next essentially for, you know, container standardization in, in the OCI context? Will there be a 2.0, a 1.1? Um, as far as like quickly on the runtime side, I think things will slow down a little on the spec work and that's kind of expected. Like. We want to have something out that's solid where we can all have something that we can depend on for at least a while now to build up platforms and all these features that users expect from our products. So I'd hope that it would slow down at least on the spec side, but there's always new innovations coming out, more security features, networking, things like that, that need some type of support from the runtime layer that we'll have to work around and find ways to add those to the spec where they're not uh, backwards and compatible changes or breaking changes like that. So I think it'll be a, an interesting balance of still pushing containers forward with 
without like shifting the base that everyone's building on. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree on the runtime side. On the image side, um, you know, there's there's still some contentious discussions about what the plan is going forward. Um, uh, some people believe that we need to add more 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 scope to the image spec. Other people believe that um, it's the question of you know how much scope we need to add and these sorts of things. Um, I mean, I, I think most definitely there will be 1.1 of all these things, just because the container and landscape is obviously evolving. Um, when it will happen, I think that's a question for. Uh, you know, a soothsayer or someone who can like tell us the future. Um, because I mean, ultimately, once the specs are done, everyone's gonna like take a week of just like nothing but sleep because it's been a very, very long process. But um, you know, once once that's done, then uh, you know, we can we can move on with the next thing. But as Michael said, it's important that uh, obviously the spec will be an evolving thing, but it's important, as you said, that we have a a solid base on on all fronts, and that um, if we push out one one zero, and then like next week we have one that one, uh, that's not exactly you know what we'd want. So um, I mean, I, I would hope we would have one that one as something that is like an extension to that, rather than just breaking everything. We had a face to face meeting of some of the maintainers earlier today, and one of the things that I was really pleased to see was there's an organic group of folks that have evolved a set of label schemas to associate with container images. And uh, thanks to Stephen Day, who's actually uh, sitting, uh, sitting here in the room, who's one of the maintainers on the image format, we're working on a pull request to uh, merge that set of labels into the image format spec and then to take the, to work with the folks that have developed that to have them. Uh, point to the image format spec. So I think there's it's exciting to see when some things evolve organically and then uh, those can collaboratively get brought into uh, the OCI image spec in this case. Thanks, Rob. Um, what's what's interesting kind of about you know standards and and spec work, eventually like once you actually have something finalized, you generally need some kind of stamp of approval or, or some kind of you know certification or compliance related to actually show that you have you know your different implementers are actually adhering to um, said spec um, Rob do you kind of want to speak a little bit to what the plans are for you know kind of our you know stamp of approval for implementations of, of the specs in the future sure so the open container initiative has a certification program work group that's been working on what uh, what it might mean to say that a container image uh, is OCI certified or a container runtime is OCI certified and then to use uh, the OCI logo and the OCI trademark. Uh, that group is work, trying to work collaboratively with the tool, the runtime tools testing project and the image tools project to make sure that there is automated testing and automated image validation that can be run with the intent of making it uh, easy for an organization to go ahead and do uh, t do their own testing of their product, and then to potentially present their results of that testing in a way that others could verify. Kind of a instead of a self certification, kind of a peer certification model where you show that your uh, product meets successfully runs the tests, and then you describe the results of or you describe the steps for how to do that. So it's a little bit slightly more than self-certification, but not the significant overhead of a lab certification model. And so the two testing tools groups and the certification program work group have been working on that. And I expect that that'll be one of the things that also sees uh, some effort after folks uh, take the rest that Alexa mentioned. <laughs> so I have a few more questions, but before I kind of, or before I dive into, into them, um, Kind of would like to open up to the audience uh, if there's any kind of questions of what's going on in, in OCI land or um, you know any anything to kind of direct towards uh, the folks as part of the OCI community. Oh, we got one immediately back there. That was quick. Thanks. So, uh, container uh, storage initiative is it a part of OCI? So uh, when we started OCI, we deliberately limited the scope of the project to focus on um, essentially the runtime um, execution bit and the image uh, format later on. Uh, and that's deliberately scoped to that level. So if you go to the OCI website, there's actually a ridiculous thing called a scope table, which kind of you know, describes what is in scope and out of scope for the project. Uh, things like storage and networking are always meant to be outside the scope of OCI. So you may see 
projects uh, that may bubble up in CNCF down the road that kind of deal with storage or, or, or networking and, and so on. The OCI itself was meant to be very, very narrow uh, in scope uh, on purpose. And uh, one other thing to just to mention on that is that um, uh, while it's out of scope, the important thing to note is that um, uh, the runtime spec has a uh, concept of hooks. Like the the idea is is that while networking is out of scope as like a thing that we would specify, if you have an implementation that implements some sort of networking thing that would work with an OCI runtime, the idea would be that in principle you could use it between runtimes. Um, that would that would be the the hope at least, right? This is a quick question. Uh, <clears throat> connecting to the previous talk that happened here, yeah. container D, how does that link to OCI? <laughs> What's the relationship? I'm just trying to make sense. Uh, yeah, D. so like container D uses run C as its default yeah. runtime. So you can think of container D as kind of a multiplexer for run Cs, at least on the execution side. So it will as container D goes to its 1.0, it's pulling in the image distribution aspects uh, that Docker used to do. And also it has the execution side where it, you, it generates or consumes OCI specs and then e executes run C with those specs with the, the images checked out in overlay file systems and the root file systems built up for the images. So like it's a consumer of OCI. Yeah. Like implements the specs by inherently consuming run C essentially and supporting the image spec. Yeah, but it's not confined to run C. You can use any OCI uh, runtime that consumes the spec. Any other questions from the audience? As a user of the containers, uh, is there any anything we can follow as best practices or anything? I know you are mostly focused on uh, developing a container, correct? More like Docker or Rocket, whatever it is. So anything for the consumers of those containers? Um, I, I think that maybe the best way to answer your question is um, uh, all the development in the community happens openly, so you could go follow, you know, that whether it's on, you know, IRC or GitHub. But you know, from an end user perspective, I think once the certification program, um, you know, kind of gets launched and finalized, uh, there'll be some mark like, you know, OCI certified solution or something of that nature that you could look at. Um, products or other solutions out there that will say that, you know, they support and adhere, uh, you know, kind of a common uh, standard. So that kind of from a consum consumer's perspective, I could see looking for that in the future. I don't know if Rob has a... I think if you frame your question as what's the benefit of OCI to end users and to developers, I think you can look at it similar to uh, the... Uh, if you frame the question similar as what's the benefit of HTTP or, H or HTML or JavaScript to web developers? Having a, uh, cons a well-defined, consistent, uh, in the case, you know, protocol for hypertext transfer or definition of hypertext or definition or JavaScript, having those as a shared standard, as a shared community standard uh, that users can take advantage of, even if they don't necessarily participate in the development of that standard, is a valuable thing for end users. There's millions of web developers that write in HTML or JavaScript, and having uh, the W3C or I think it's TC39 that does JavaScript, having the set of folks that participate in those, that define those standards and keep those moving forward, is of value to the greater web development community in the same way that OCI hopefully is of value to the greater container community. One challenge we always face is from the infrastructure teams and the ops, the security and enterprise standards. Uh, how Docker is, uh, or Docker or whatever the container is, uh, you know, providing or giving security to the systems when they're moving from regular systems to the containerized, uh, is there any document available uh, specifying this in the standards 
are certified by some security organization in US supporting your security structure um well, well at least on the uh the security side of it and the spec side the spec is a blank slate so whatever the platform security features or guarantees are they may be fulfilled by the runtime and the spec but if you have a blank spec it's basically just like running a process on your host machine there's nothing applied to it and it's all built up on the process of the platform and the runtime that you're using so it really there's no suggestions coming from the OCI of like how you secure your container develop or platforms it, yeah it's it's somewhat somewhat out of scope depending how you define security you could you know in my mind i kind of view just going back to the wonderful like html analogy right you kind of have your spec of how you know html is done and then you have the browsers that adhere to that standard and run it and they compete on different levels you know some of these different solutions may compete on how well they secure uh, and containers and environment, which we're kind of seeing in the industry today, in my opinion. And also, I mean, uh, going back to the HTML example, which is a very, very good one, um, is that uh, in the same way, if, you, if you're talking about like uh, coming up with best practices, I mean, HTML does not define a best practice of how to use HTML. HTML defines how HTML works. And then you would have people who come up with best practices on top of that. The, the benefit of having OCI in that picture is that these best practices in principle would be you could you could run it with run C and then you can switch to, you know, other runtime X and the same sort of best practice would apply. Uh, that would be the intention at least. And I mean, in the, in the case of, um, well, it depends on the situation, but that's basically what the, what the plan would be when it comes to best practices like that. Uh, so with regards to your question and uh, following up on that, so Center of Internet Security, I think that's CIS, they just release a, released a 96 pages of, Security, um, security issues with containers and uh, how they need to be addressed and all of that. So, is that something um, you know that aligns with the the overall container community OCI or? Uh, but apparently, CIS did release a, a ninety-five page document on container security. I have not had the time to take a peek at the 95 page document yet, but um, 90, 96, sorry, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, preparing for a conference is always a lot of work, but uh, uh, you, know, you know, like I mentioned before, security itself is somewhat out of scope for OCI. We would rely on our members and you know, you know, they themselves may have, I'm sure there's vendors within the OCI community that have looked at, at, at security. So we, we try to be very narrow in scope of what we focus on. Yes, so question. Uh, what, what can we come to expect after the 1.0 release? I think the number one thing you can come to expect after the 1.0 release is going to be openness and transparency. And I think that's really awesome and important for the organization that everything is done on GitHub, the conference calls are open, uh, the specs are, all the pull requests, all the ideas for the specs, all the issues, they're all up there. So you have the opportunity to see what's going on. If you want to join uh, the conference calls, they're 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Pacific. Sometimes it's hard for some of us to get up for the 8 a.m. ones. Sometimes it's hard for Alexa out of Australia to catch uh, one of those as well, because I think it's 2 a.m. But uh, it's a very open and transparent process for anyone who wants to get involved. And I, th I think uh, going into some of the specifics, uh, folks have talked about in run in runtime, uh, folks have talked a little bit already about in runtime in an image format what might be coming down the pipe. I'll yield to Alexa or Michael if you guys want to talk about that. I think I already mentioned briefly uh, certification. I think there was talk of the possibility of a little bit of scope expansion into, quote, distribution. And there's a little bit of, there's some conversations about exactly what distribution means. Um, probably a 1.1 and probably, as Alexa said, a little bit of sleep. And just stability. like. <laughs> Be, being confident that you can start building a container platform and you have runtime support behind you if you use the spec. Yeah, I, 
I, I think we'll, to kind of answer your question, I think we'll see other larger, maybe uh, cloud providers kind of put their stamp that they're OCI certified. Like we saw um, the AWS folks uh, adopted the OCI image spec early, early, early as part of their uh, registry offering. So I think we'll see more, co like problems with these things, like if, if it's not 1.0 final, people are very skittish to adopt it. It's annoying as hell, but that's just the way the industry uh, works. So once 1.0 final comes on, we'll see, uh, I think a lot more uh, OCI adoption. Because distribution means a lot of things in this, could you maybe, <laughs> I know you said it was like open, but could you narrow down what you meant by distribution in that? Because that could mean a lot of things. How much time do we have? Uh, yeah, go, go, uh, we I mean, five, let's five, say five, five, ten minutes. I don't think I could narrow down what distribution means because I think we've got a large community with a lot of people for whom distribution means different things. And so I wouldn't, I, I can't say what I think it means to the community because I think if each of us tried to articulate it, you'd get three different answers. And if other maintainers tried to articulate it, they might articulate it a little differently as well. Let me so clar I, clarify the question, might help you. <laughs> I work for Red Hat. We ship a distribution of Linux. We distribute a distribution of Linux. We can distribute, so like, could you confine distribution to mean one of those things maybe moving bits from one place to another okay thank you yeah easy <laughs> yeah hi uh, just to extend on the previous question about what to expect up after 1.0 are there any features that we are still working on, like, you know, important features, uh, which, which are, so I, I think a couple of weeks ago we released uh, RC3, and are there any major features that uh, we expect in the coming releases, or is it more about solidifying and stabilizing? Um, I'm not aware of any outstanding, like, major features or user impacting features that we have. I mean, for the runtime spec, I think that's basically done. Uh, for the image spec, I think there's still some stuff which I think yeah. is, um, I wouldn't classify it as a, it, it, it's, it's a lot of clarification stuff, but also that there's some stuff that we're trying to um, add some specification to describe um, certain things that a user might want. But but as in terms of features, I feel like yeah. we've sort of, we all really want to hit 1.0, so I think that um, any m more major feature work, I think we've all sort of agreed is going to happen after that. Um, for now, it's just getting it out there and getting people to actually test it, which, as, as Chris said, it's a bit difficult because uh, people don't like adopting pre-1.0 specs. Maybe we should just name it 1.0 now yeah. and then like release 1.0 next probably would solve week. the problem. Yeah. We should just start at 1.0. And yeah. This would have been 2.0. So. But yes, I think um, new features I would expect afterwards. Uh, right now, uh, we're just working on stabilizing everything and making sure that um, nobody is going to start like screaming the second after we release 1.0. One more question. Hello. Oh, yeah. So forgive me if I'm misunderstanding. Um, I just use Docker to build containers and deploy them. Uh, but I have a question regarding the image spec. Um, we obviously pull base images down. I didn't know if you have gone through and see if there's going to be any major changes to those, um, the impact of OCI, maybe them um, wanting to conform to your standards, or if there's big gaps in their standards um, that they want to implement. Who wants to answer that one? Essentially, would would existing images potentially be? Uh, if I'm if I'm getting your question right, like, it, would would existing images essentially be broken or something based on our, our work with the image spec? Yeah, do we expect major major changes coming from the um, the base images that a lot of people use, like such as like Ubuntu or something like that? Or if I'm completely off, then yes, uh, no, okay. like not any of the Docker engines. Like we'll handle pulling both both image types and all yeah. that work. I mean, the image spec itself was was very um, def uh, based on like the Docker v2.2 oh, cool. thing. But I mean, Stephen, you're welcome to. Yeah, yeah we we have the actual maintainer. Sorry. Awesome. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's there's a few name changes, but everything's mostly compatible. Um, yeah. If you really want to see the details, Container D has an implementation of pull, and I just right now I'm. Uh, the media types are for Docker or OCI, and then I just deserialize into OCI data types, so they work pretty. Um, it's all pretty compatible, so, um, yeah. and that was an intention. Yeah. So, 
Cool. Uh, any more questions? If not, uh, I promised uh, Rob that we would end this about five minutes early because he's got a cat flight to catch. But uh, other than that, uh, thank you. Uh, if you're interested in getting involved with the project, check out opencontainers.org. And hopefully over the next uh, month or two, look for uh, the 10 final. And uh, please get involved and test this stuff out. We've been, we've been at it for a while. And definitely, we've been dying for kind of uh, end user feedback. So again, thank you for everyone's time. And thank you for uh, my panelists for taking time and um, you know, sharing, sharing the stage with, with us. So, thank you.